What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Chadish. We are back at it again with episode 12 of Educate and Dominate, our one-on-one interview series where we bring the biggest names into the game so that you can take their information, their insight, and take your game to the next level. My guest is a uh, awesome member uh, from Fallen Blossoms and uh, a resident of the lovely country. Is it country or continent of Sydney, Australia? Uh, yeah, we're both a country and a continent, but uh, thank you so much for having me, Chadish. <laughs> I was waiting for that first fail. I think I just did it because I was like, country, continent, what? <laughs> no, but either way, guys, yes, I'm super excited to have him on board. Uh, for those that don't know, Fallen Blossoms is a top 50 guild in the Guild War ranks, um, but Fish Guts is one of the many people in his uh, group that consistently lands in the Guardian 2 ranks when it comes down to that Arena Reset Day. So I'm super excited to have on board because I know he has a ton of knowledge, a ton of insight to get uh, to you. So we'll go ahead and get into it right now. Uh, Fish, you know that uh, as, as we get going here, everybody has seen you in the top 100, but nobody knows you. So why don't you kind of give us a little background into how you got into the gaming world leading up to Summoner's War and then in turn find Fallen Blossoms, your home. Um, okay, yeah, thanks, Charlie, again for uh, yeah, having me here. Um, for sure. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the series. Um, the guys that you've had on here, like Mevrid, Ranga, uh, Barian, of course, you know, YDCB, you know, guys that I've been following for a long time as well. And uh, yeah, I'm really glad to have this opportunity. Uh, obviously, uh, I haven't accomplished as much as they have, certainly, but. Uh, you know, hopefully there'll be uh, yeah something that I can offer. Um, For sure. But uh, yeah, in terms of gaming history, um, I guess uh, I grew up essentially in a household with uh, four boys. So yeah, three younger siblings. So we were always pretty competitive and uh, into gaming. Um, early on, it was probably uh, you know the fighting style games like Tekken and Soul Calibur that piqued our interest. I'm not sure Tekken, if you. Tekken, uh, Tekken, okay, you guys okay, are okay. into that, yeah. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, pretty much in uni, or uh, oh, I guess what you Americans would call it, college. Um, you know, played a probably a good four or five years of World of Warcraft. So, um, and during which you know, you know, doing bit of a, I guess, a raid leading and, uh, and uh, yeah, I guess just, yeah, manage, guild management, I guess. Um, so that, that really got me, I guess, further into gaming, um, you know, to the extent that it was probably taking up too much time, um, you know, working these days. So it's pretty di- difficult to find, uh, you know, two or three hours to just, you know, sit at your PC and, you know, go on a raid, etc. So, uh, yeah, definitely mobile gaming is is the most suitable type of gaming for me now. And, uh, yeah, stumbled across Summer's War in August, um, it's just by chance, and uh, pretty much I've been logging on daily ever since. I think it's a, it's a really great game, and it's probably the first uh, of the many mobile games that I've tried that, you know, has really stuck. Um, in terms of the guild and I guess Summoners War Forum, so again, stumbled across this forum um, probably around about late last year and um, yeah, found the guys and girls on there, um, you know, a real delight to talk to. Um, I think in February this year, we pretty much formed the guild, um, Fallen Blossoms. It was pretty much when Chisun was OP, so hence the name, I guess. Uh, right. Previous to that, <laughs> previous to that, uh, we were in, uh, in a in a guild named Fallen Light, and uh, we effectively merged with a with another guild on the forum to to form uh, Fallen Blossom, um, and it's pretty much stayed the same group of people ever since. Um, you know, I guess now it's good. Good time to talk about the forum. So, Summoners War Forum dot net. Um, I think uh, Malf in episode uh, ten also gave us a plug, which was great, and uh, it was really good to see the Exodus members come across as well. Um, you know, just to, I guess, uh, obviously, you know, give give the forum uh, more traffic, but also. Uh, you know, most of those guys have a lot of insights as well, and uh, 
quite a few of them have put their hand up to write articles as well, which has been really great. Uh, but I should probably save some of that for the show. Shout out, shouldn't I? <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're a new player, definitely, um, definitely come and visit the forums. We're we're always uh, we're always happy to help out if you have questions, etc. Good deal. Well, uh, how about uh, with regards to the Fallen Blossoms, or excuse me, uh, let me take that back. With regards to working your way up to the, you know, Conquer or Guardian ranks, uh, you know, obviously you've been playing this game quite some time, and you've heard some of these episodes prior to. Um, is there anything uh, new and exciting that kind of helped you get up there on the way, some of the things that you kind of learned about the way to get up to the Guardian ranks? Um, to be honest, no. <laughs> um, I have to say that it was have to say that it's probably been a lot of hard work. Um, I guess there's probably two ways to get into Guardian. One is probably pull a lot of the premium natural five stars, which uh, fortunately I haven't had that luck. <laughs> um, I pl complain all the time to my guildies about how, uh, yeah, I haven't had much luck with that. Uh, you know, haven't been able to lately. I've been complaining about how I haven't been able to pull fire effort. They're probably sick to death of me complaining about this. But uh, no, I mean, I guess that's that's one aspect of it. And the other aspect is, um, yeah, the, sorry, the other way to get there is probably through your runes and just um, having really solid uh, three star units, you know, four star units, which uh, is basically. What I've done, um, I've had some luck, I guess, in uh, in being able to form rune farming teams. So uh, back in, uh, I'm not sure when, but definitely late last year, when uh, when um, you know the the the, the two Hua tag team giants farming videos surfaced. Luckily, I had to, so that really gave me a head start. It, in terms of uh, being able to farm giants B10 for um, you know, Swift in particular, I guess, uh, and uh, focus runes. Um, and then again, when, um, when uh, Lumi, res Lumi um, the water silphid um, surfaced uh, as being you know, someone that can solo dragons B10, luckily I had just pulled one and probably like a month ago if I had pulled her you know no one thought much of about of her at the time so I probably would have just fed her but luckily I pulled her you know just at the right time and I was able to utilize her to farm, farm a lot of uh, violent runes and uh, yeah pretty much ever since then I've just been farming runes religiously um, you know if, even the top players with the five stars will tell you that it's all about the runes and uh, if you're willing to put in the hard work to to uh, yeah, get those runes from giants or and dragons B10, then uh, you could you definitely can get into uh, you know, guardian ranking. Good deal. And it's funny because I you know I bring that up and it's kind of almost like a, a setup to say the same thing. You know, we got a lot of new people coming all the time to see this um, series, and and I kind of just I just want to hit it hard and, and address it hard. Uh, you, you're going to hear it time and time again with any of your interview with you guys, especially for you guys that are new and intermediate players. Um, it's so cool that you're checking out this this video, and, and, and we truly appreciate it. But there's only so much that we can tell you other than, you know, get the units, get the runes. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's all going to come down to the RNG with the, the units. But you got to focus on what you can control, and what you can't control is the ability to farm runes day in and day out and, and put them to good use so that you can take some of these uh, non-unique, you know, units and make them unique with the rune sets uh, that you bring to the table because there's nothing worse than going into a fight and being like, oh my god, this team sucks, I'm going to wax them, and you get your ass handed to you because their runes are just three times stronger than what, you know, what it is, and so... Uh, Yes, I believe Fish and I both agree there. Uh, focus on what you control. Get those runes and get the job done. Boom. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, really your focus in this game um, is to, to initially to form a, a, a giant farming t team that, you know, can just run it on auto so that, you know, you just set them to run and then go do something and come back in five minutes 
and uh, hopefully you have a nice shiny six star rune. But obviously that's you know going to take time. It takes maybe a hundred runs to get like a rune that you really want. But uh, you just have to keep at it. Yeah, yeah. I think it was uh, Scatter Bomber that said on their video that they generally they may get a, a good rune to upgrade their one of their units like once every like two to four weeks. It's something sick. I mean. Yeah, it's getting to that point as well uh, for me, I feel. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't mean that... Um, it doesn't mean... Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> it doesn't mean that um, the runes are irrelevant, right? But, I mean, you have something that upgrades for one of your units. It means that you can then use that rune on another unit. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I like to have... I like the fact that I have a lot of units and they're all relatively uh, well ruined. Um, it just gives me that flexibility to to uh, tackle arena when the when the time comes. Good deal. And speaking about that flexibility, you got a couple of um, teams that you stated as far as what you use in the uh, arena offense and arena defense. Can we talk about your uh, like top arena offense and your top arena defense and, and generally what you like to use at the Guardian two ranks? <laughs> Um, okay, I guess uh, in terms of offense, um, there are two fixtures at currently um, in my team, which are, of course, Vero Moss and, and Bella. I think the two of them, so sorry, so that's uh, Dark Ifrit, which everyone probably will know, and then uh, the Light Inugami. I feel the two of them bring um, probably, you know, the most that you can get out of uh, I guess two farmable units, um, you know. Bella, well, sorry, Viramos with the uh, debuff removal and Bella, in particularly the the buff removal. I find is really important to bring. Um, there's so many teams still that run immunity that you absolutely want um, the 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 seize skill available and obviously he's also uh, so she's also my uh, armor breaker um, and healer as well so those two are pretty much always in my arena offense team um, and then the other two slots are probably I guess uh, rotated constantly so um, you know with arena offense um, especially at the guardian 2 rank um, it's very difficult to just maintain one team if you don't have the premium five stars um, that you know bring a, a larger kit than, I guess, a, a equivalent three star. Um, so often, often one of the slots will be filled by one of the, my rakshasas. Um, so usually Hua or Su. And uh, the other slot is currently probably being filled up by Escher, which is my uh, light werewolf, which I only just pulled last month, and I was really, really happy about that. But uh, congratulations! Yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, it's definitely made things a lot easier um, in terms of rush hour, just because of the uh, probably op i would say a best damage that he, he can bring out and as well as the utility being able to heal being able to speed boost being able to remove buffs as well with his uh with his third skill it, he's he almost does too much and uh <laughs> and i think i think everyone agreed that come to us was a you know a little too generous when they gave them or gave him recently a leadership skill as well, but only affecting guild battles. But still, I, I take that. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> and the, and the uh, arena defense, I'm assuming you still have Veramos and Bella in there. Is there anybody that you would sub in there for for it or are you using Darian there? What do you what do you got going on for arena defense? Um, arena defense, I like to change as well from week to week, um, just, you know, to keep people from, I guess, farming your your defense. Uh, Viramos is a fixture. Bella isn't necessarily a fixture. I feel like uh, I feel like that she is too much of a priority target sometimes. Um, currently, I'm running um, Viramos with, uh, with Light Silford, so Mihail, and, uh, and yeah, Darian, and also Jubel as well. So... Um, and that will probably change, but um, 
yeah, like just, just in terms of uh, of defense, um, the main thing I want to try and get in there as much as possible is armor breaks. Um, and I, I try to use as many, I guess, you know, light and dark units just to make it um, harder for people to, uh, I guess, uh, you know, channel channel my attackers to to us to uh, to one of their elemental tanks etc um and of course sorry Escher would probably be in my defense as well eventually um come come uh, rush hour as uh yeah again he just he just does so much and he he's just a, a bit of threat as well so um yeah might as well capitalize yeah. on that while he's while he's Oh, yeah, hopefully well, he never gets nerfed. But right, uh, right. don't nerf him, come to us. Don't nerf him. <laughs> I don't even have yeah. one, but don't nerf him. He, awesome. Yeah, he probably deserves one, but uh, you know, <laughs> nice. hopefully not. Hopefully not. Nerf the five stars. Don't nerf yeah, the three yeah, stars. Nerf the Thanks. Five stars. <laughs> All right. Well, good. Uh, uh, one of the things that you did point out in your arena offense is that you utilize um, a couple of your rakshasas, and and one of the things that I. Uh, I, I've been known for uh, the people that have followed me for quite some time is the damage that I do with uh, my Rakshasha and of course you have a completely different um, setup yet uh, um, you, you are doing you know just as well so uh, for those that have been following for quite some time I am I've been using uh, my Rakshasha uh, and it's always been a swift broken set because I never had the runes to fill out you know a subset and I was running speed attack attack um, generally um, creating on the defense broken unit anywhere from 20 to 24 K. Um, but it, it, it obviously varies. Uh, you know, we played around with, uh, a, a crit damage on the four slide and an attack on the four slide. And for me at the time, um, it was, it seemed to be that the swift set with the high speed, um, was working really, really well. Now, uh, fish has a different outtake on that. And so I kind of want you to, you know, kind of get into these units, um, whichever one you want to start first is fine. And then we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of work our way down. Okay. Um, yeah. So I do have all three, uh, I guess, elemental rashasas. Uh, I don't have the light or dark one yet, but uh, yeah, hopefully one day. Um, You'll get there. You'll and get there. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Su and Hua, uh, they're probably my two uh, main ones. They're uh, essentially my elemental nukers. Um, and if I guess everyone should really be getting or should develop an elemental nuker, uh, probably for the fire and the water element. Uh, wind is probably not so urgent at the moment, but uh, definitely if you would want yeah, a, a water and a fire nuker because uh, I guess the current environment that we're in, people are generally running one or two threats with uh, light and dark support. Um, so, you know, if that threat happens to be fire, then you bring your water nuka. If that threat is, is wind, then you bring uh, your fire nuka. And obviously, I guess currently there's not that much uh, water units for, for, for wind nuka to hit. But, um, but yeah, I guess getting into Sue first, um, I think she's still really an overlooked uh, unit. And uh, there was... Yeah, you, know, you could tell because when they brought back that uh, heroes, sorry, Hall of Heroes uh, event where you had to, you could vote for her and no one did, I was very disappointed. Um, <laughs> you know, I tried to bring some awareness to the community by uh, writing an article her, about her at that point, but uh, yeah, I think everyone was just blinded by how cool the ninja looks, which is yeah, fair enough. But uh, yeah, still a bit. Of, Bitter to this day because um, I would have really liked uh, um, a, a Rakshasa uh, HOH because uh, yeah I'm still I'm still scaling them up. Um, so like all all Rakshasas, I think the first ability is what defines them. Um, this is it's the ability that scales with uh, attack speed, um, and hence why we're running speed on the second slot. Um, I run Violent on all of them. I uh, originally did run Swift on Sue, but I find that having Violent just gives you that element of unpredictability. Um, yeah, it, it, it is the, the rune set for, um, for PvP at the moment, so uh, yeah. 
um, on armor break, my suit probably had, only hits for about 12k on on the first attack. Um, but um, keep in mind that it's there's no cooldown, so whenever you get violent procs, you know it, you can just keep using it, and it, it, it it's yeah it it it, it adds up, um, and also it slows the opponent, which is really useful against. Um, yeah, I, I generally bring Sue to hit to hit Chloe's in particular. Um, so the slow is definitely really useful. Um, so I guess yeah, you know, even though the best sorry, even though the meta is all about having burst damage and having crit damage, um, I think hard hitting slow units like Sigma is is not always the best. Um, I know people gen generally compare, um, you know. What, I guess benchmark water dukers against Sigma and how much Sigma can hit and you know people go wow well yeah I can hit for 30k on my Sigma but um, I guess the problem with Sigma I feel is that it's just a little too slow um, and so often you know you find people bring three slow units and a Chloe to their arena defense, and that's not necessarily always going to work because of how prolific Bella is at the moment. Um, you re really run the risk that uh, Bella you know, removes the Chloe shield, and then essentially, um, you know, they could have taken out one of your units before you've been um, able to move. So, yeah, like I, f I feel like. Um, you know, s s abilities like uh, the Rakshasa's first uh, ability and the fact that he only pushes out 12k damage is, a is actually not reflective of um, has how much damage potential there is there. And uh, I'll definitely, you know, take that over a Sigma that can hit for 30k, you know, even though, you know, with 100 speed or you know and has has to wait three turns before he he can do that again mm -hmm. um yep oh i was just gonna say here and I, and i think it, you know it's funny because i i've been running swift in my whole if i did have a sue i probably would um do violent as well because it just seems like um you know it's kid providing all of these hostile effects makes it so easy um for you know you who to get the this additional turn and get the ability to generate a stun. So I'm guessing when you're going in the arena, like you have no problems getting her to land that stun on the third skill, huh? Yeah. So the, the good thing about the third skill, which um, um, is that it, it is a guaranteed stun if there are two debuffs on the target. So it doesn't actually do a resistance or accuracy check. And even if your third, even if the skill glances on a uh, uh, say on a wind unit, you will still get the stun. So it's really, really, really useful in that regard. Um, yes, whenever you get violent procs, uh, it's great with Sue because you know you use her second ability, which lays down three, um, well up to three continuous damage stacks, and then you get that violent proc, and then you can instantly use her third ability to stun. Uh, that target, um, but I guess also the third ability does scale really well. I mean, I'm not running that much attack power on mine, only probably about 1600, or not even that actually. Um, and this third ability, even though it doesn't scale with, uh, with speed, um, mine still hits quite hard, probably around about the 20k mark um, on an armor broken target. So um, yeah, it's it's actually really good damage, and uh, it's on a three turn cooldown once you skilled it up fully, and it also gives her a heal as well. So um, if she's hitting for twenty k, then she she actually well mine heals back, you know, fifty to sixty percent of her HP, and you know that's just so much utility. And um, honestly, her third skill I, I feel does too much as well for for something that's on a three turn cooldown, but that's why I yeah I I, I think Sue, in my mind, is probably the best Rakshasa and probably one of the better water damage units out there. Um, another thing to add in is I guess has the second skill I feel is very useful in the uh, post Viramos era, um, where now everyone's running Viramos and the best way to to make sure your armor breaks 
sticks on a target is to, to overlay it with three continuous damage stacks um, and just, you know, hope, uh, you know, Viramos doesn't proc violent four times and uh, remove it all, but um, he probably will, but, you know, some days he will, some days he won't. So, yeah. Um, I guess two months ago, uh, you know, before I pulled Escher, Sue would just be my go-to um, attacker, and he would actually allow me to clear full lists during rush hour, even in, in Guardian Arena, um, because fire meta was was so pro prominent back then. It's it's eased a little now, so I probably use her a bit more selectively, um, but you know, still really really often. I ain't gonna lie, I'm kind of depressed because I did way back in the day had a Sue and I used it as my only skill up for Hua when making her a six star. So now I'm, I ain't gonna lie, I'm pretty <laughs> I'm pretty down in that. <laughs> uh, when it when it uh, comes to we've when, all it comes, done that, so. when it comes to Sue, uh, you know, with relation to her sisters here, Hua and Yen, is there mm -hmm. any um, any other differences that um, change the guard fit. Do you find that the damage uh, just kind of across the board scales more or less the same? Have you noticed any different with regards to the damage modifiers on their on their second attacks or third attacks? Uh, or so, uh, excuse me, second attacks, but on any of them? Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously she she's got more, one ability more than the other two sisters. Um, she's missing a passive, but um, yeah, in terms of damage, I think they're pretty consistent. Um, third ability. Obviously, I think it probably hits a bit harder than um, it should be. I think um, I run all three of my rushes with roughly the same, uh, I guess, stats, if you like. Um, I, you know, I try to get them roughly the same speed, roughly the same crit damage and crit rate. Um, so yeah, I, and I haven't noticed much difference in terms of uh, scaling. So um, yeah, they're pretty consistent. Um, I guess Hua, we'll probably talk about next, um, is probably the most uh, well-known one out of the three um, and probably actually probably well-regarded by the community. But I feel I see too many people probably running um, the accuracy and speed type uh, build on her. And I, I don't think that's where uh, she shines the most. Um, you know, I've, I've got mine ruined the same as yours, so... Uh, speed, crit damage, and attack, and I don't even have a six-star crit damage rune for her yet, so there's still a lot of improvement that, uh, yeah, she's far from perfect. Um, but, yeah, in terms of, uh, you know, overlook the fact that she debuffs attack bars, you know, it, you know to me that's a bonus. Um, the, real, the real thing... Sorry, the real uh, attractive thing about her is the the passive and the ability to to strike again with twenty percent chance. Um, you know, when that procs, uh, you know, your your twelve k damage becomes twenty five k. You know, uh, with another violent proc thrown in and another proc, then you know you you can pretty much melt almost anyone um, in one turn. So yeah, it's pretty darn. Cool. Um, and, and that. And, yeah, and that, that's that's what you're looking for in arena these days when uh, you've got the likes of Chasun and um, you know really tanky units that you can't stop from healing. Um, you know, one you you suppress their bars, and then second you you burst them with a lot of damage, right? Um, but yeah, um, I guess Yen is probably the last one to. Talk about, uh, as I mentioned before, um, you know, it, it, the fire meta has eased a bit, but we're far from a, a water meta. There's probably, you know, just a handful of uh, quality water, water units that you see in arena. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, Yen doesn't get used as much as I would like, and I'm still scaling her up as well, um, something I'll get around to eventually. But um, I definitely keep her ruined relatively well. Um, still just there in case I do need her. Um, uh, her. Her passive is like Hua's, but instead of um, applying an additional attack, she just she just gets an extra turn, which is which is great. I think it that interacts um, with Violent as well to to give her. Uh, I mean, the passive is 
while the passive is only is 15%, it's, it's probably a lot more than that when you consider the effect of violence. Um, so, um, yeah, same setup with her, you know, still missing some six star runes, uh, six star crit damage runes. I just cannot get any four slot crit damage runes from, uh, from dragons for some reason. Which is, uh, it's so, I mean, it's okay that when you look at it in perspective, I mean, if you're getting a crit damage rune, a five star crit damage rune with, you know, 11 to 15 percent crit rate, you know, double digit speed or whatnot, I mean, you got to take that all into consideration. Like, there's some. I feel that there's just some some five star runes that I I'll never get rid of because the subsets are just so good. And again, it it, it just goes back to that topic of quality of runes. So I I, I could see yeah. why you still use what you use. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, if, when you start farming dragons initially, you know, keep every single violent rune that has that rolls a a, a speed subset um, or crit subset. Uh, you know, upgrade them, see what you get doesn't matter that they're five stars um you know I've, i run plenty of uh five star runes that have really good subs on them um just because you know i've kept them around you know s you know see where the upgrades went and realized hey this is probably a decent rune you know it's probably better than a six star equivalent that didn't roll those sub stats exactly good deal and i was taking a look at these units here um we were going to go, go ahead and talk about quite a few of them, but I, I know that we've pointed out a few times. You have an interesting um, outlook on Jubel when it comes to your setup there versus Samo, so I was kind of wondering if you could talk about that and kind of enlighten them on how you go about using him um, and your setups, whether it's Arena or Guild Wars. Um, yeah, so Jubel is... Well, I actually have two Jubels at the moment, um, which is uh, quite interesting. Um, the one that I go to all the time um, is the one that is running uh, speed, HP, HP, and it's the one that's running around about 182 speed and uh, has currently has 82% accuracy. Um, for me, uh, Jubel is a bit of a Guild Wars specialist. Um, the main thing I want from him is to keep uh, armor break up. Um, and yeah, speed is obviously important, and obviously accuracy is important as well. Um, I know a lot of people um, initially looked at Jubel versus Darian and thought, okay, his natural HP is too low, um, so he's probably not going to be worth it. But recently, he's become more popular. Um, but still, most people are running him with the Darian build, which is just HP all around. Which I do have as well, but I find that I always go back to the one that has speed and accuracy um, because armor breaks are just you know, so powerful at the moment. Um, and you'll notice that um, I guess my Bella and my Jubel, they both run pretty similar speed and it's just a tiny bit faster than my Rashasas. So, yeah, and... You know, it, it was in, it was intentional that, to have them all of course, yeah. uh, roughly at the same speed, so that I can always rotate them in and out. So, um, and that's I think that's pretty important. In Guild Wars at the moment, having flexibility to just uh, to rotate your units around and and not to break the attack sequence. So it's always going to be Bella moves first, and then Sue hits or Hua hits. Um, you know, or Jubel moves and then Hua also hits. So, um, yeah, that it's, you know, I guess that's probably the underpinning um, principle in my, um, I guess, Arena and Guild Wars offense uh, attack, sequence, attack sequencing. And um, even though I could get Sue a lot faster or I can get Bella a lot faster, uh, I, you know, I have the speed set at a, a point where the rest of my team, um, uh, I guess, at the speed that, you know, my team collectively as a whole can reach. Uh, that means, you know, three hours of just rotating runes around during rune removal days. But, you know, yeah, that's, that's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, it's crazy. I'm going through some of these units here, and it seems like, like 170 to 175, 180 is kind of like that benchmark of, of speed that you're kind of utilizing for all those units. Is that, is that pretty accurate? Yeah, that's right, and that's what I can hit at the moment. Uh, obviously, if I continue to get 
good substat uh, speed substat runes, and I can get everyone up to 180. Um, I would like that, but um, you know, uh, yeah, obviously that's going to take time. But um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't sacrifice uh, speed on Dubell just to make my Bella faster because I use them pretty pretty much interchangeably. That's I guess what I'm trying to get at. Mm. Yeah. And that's and that's one thing to point out. Kind of going back to that to that rune talk, guys. You know, the more runes you collect, obviously some of them are gonna, you know, not have the best sub stats uh, that you can get, but sometimes they're still well enough to kind of keep in there, so you kind of mix and match as you need. Um, you know, to the point where you get him to, to, to today. I've actually you're, you're the first that I've seen in quite some time that has so many units synchronized. Um, that I mean, they just uh, offer so much versatility when it comes to the to the guild wars and arena offense. I mean, I I can't even imagine how. Um, Easy it must be for you. I mean, of course you're going to find some, um, and that's no disrespect to anybody um, that you fight in the Guild Wars, but, you know, having the ability to synchronize so many units, I mean, I would just think it just makes it makes it so much more reliable, so much more efficient when you get into those fight. Um, you know, all you have to really worry about is RNG, you know. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Violet will still get you, but, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say, um, yeah, been pretty successful with our Guild Wars as well, um, just because of that flexibility, having uh, Jubel, Viramos, uh, Bella, and Mihail pretty much form the foundation of my Guild Wars uh, offense, and then around that I would slot in uh, Nukas, so Su, Hua, you know, Yen, if if the need arises, and, and Esha, just to... to yeah, the damage dealers are, are pretty much changed, uh, you know, according to what, what the the defense is running. But um, um, yeah, I've been relatively successful with Guild Wars keeping uh, keeping this strategy. So it's probably something I'll keep doing until there's uh, some major change, you know, maybe to violent runes or something. Um, but yeah, the the flip side of that is uh, it, it is difficult maintaining. Um, the list of, uh, I guess, runes that you have, you know, you just can't sell runes, um, even if, uh, you know, even if it's not used now, if, like you mentioned, um, you know, even though it doesn't, it only had four speed or it only has, you know, five speed and I've got an identical rune that, that is better, I can't sell that, you know, five speed rune um, because there may come a day where I need to bring uh, Bella's speed down by four or five, and that five rune, five speed rune, was exactly what I needed. So, yeah, you just have to maintain a huge list of runes, and uh, basically it becomes a huge uh, Sudoku puzzle. Yeah. Uh, how to? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No. No. Uh, yep. Go ahead. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. How many units? This is a fun question for you. How many units do you have sitting in that storage that's just holding on to all your runes? There's got to be quite a few. Um. Yeah. I've just, I've got a few. Uh, I've, I actually have a few six stars in my storage as well. Just. Uh, I, I don't know. Um. I guess before before Guild Wars was announced. Um. And before we were told that, you know, you can only use one copy of each unit. I had, you know, a second Chloe as well, things like that. You know, just, yeah, just sitting in storage with a, with a few, uh, few I guess, uh, runes that I'm not currently using. Gotcha. Good deal. Well, um, let's get into the next one. Actually, uh, real quick, though, I know we were talking about units uh, like the Rakshashas that scale with speed. Is there any unit that you can think of um, that maybe also scales with speed that you know, people don't really take advantage of and, and maybe it's like common ones that people can utilize or, or, or you know, e either that or four star, five star, you know, out there that are good that still scale well? Well, I've got a Theo Mars now, um, the uh, Water Ifrit, which I'm probably due to write an article about it this week as well. So I won't go into it too much, but uh, yeah, same setup as my Rishasas. But uh, I guess I still feel that... Uh, I still prefer to have Sue um, over Theo Mars just because of the, the the amount of utility that Sue brings. Um, but yeah, definitely his skill scales with speed, and he he hits considerably harder on his first first skill. Um, now that I've got it mostly skilled up, um, but 
Yeah, I guess it's not just raw damage sometimes. Um, you know, you do want utility as well in, in those uh, in those Guild War Arena offense teams. Um, I guess the other Ifrits all have that first ability as well. Um, and the Chimeras, I think, are another good example. Oh, sorry, certainly the Water and the Wind Chimeras, they're all, in my mind, really good units as well. Um, you know, if obviously when employing this type of strategy, um, but you know, not necessarily it would work that well for everyone, right? Right, right, right. Cool. Um, what do you feel about the uh, ones to watch? Do you have anything, any units that have recently come out, or maybe some old units that have kind of gotten um, a recent change with regards to the um, you know the recent leader skills or the revamps? Any any unit that you would kind of want to point out to the community that might be uh, worth mentioning? Um, wow, um, any units, I guess, um, I was watching, uh, Mouth's, uh, your interview with Mouth just, uh, I guess a few days ago, and I think he mentioned most of the, the good ones that were coming out, um, so Water Pirate and, uh, Fire Mermaid, for example, um, I think we're due a, a balancing bu uh, patch quite soon because they've hinted that um, they were going to rework free uh, the the fire sylphid for a while now, um, and I think probably things that will get buffed in that patch will probably be the polar queens. Um, they're probably not doing as much, um, f you know, for a natural five star at the moment. Um, so if you're sitting on one, you know. Um, I, I think I personally think that would, that would get buffed. Um, yeah, I think their second skill is the one that has the damage based on enemies' attack speed. So, yeah, I haven't seen too. I haven't seen anybody really talk too highly of that. Um, but I mean, obviously, it just kind of depends on the team you fight. Yeah, I, th I think Brandia or the Fire Polar Queen is supposed to be quite good. But um, uh, to be honest, I haven't been that impressed by them either. And the the others definitely are probably a bit subpar at the moment. But that, I mean, that seems to be come to us as trend. They seem to release, um, you know, when Monkey Kings and Beast Monks came out, they were, you know, not so great as well. And, you know, a few, uh, few patches down the track, they're now amazing. So, yeah, sure. yeah if, if you're sitting on those Polo Queens, you know, hopefully, yeah, there's hope. Good deal. And uh, mm. as far as uh, one thing to change, if there was anything that you would want to change with any of these uh, old or new units, what would it be and why? Uh, for selfish reasons, it would have to be my Wind Phoenix, the only five star that I've managed to pull in probably 10 or 11 months of playing this game. Um, and he's just so irrelevant for Arena at the moment. I mean, I know people say he's great for farming etc but you know i guess um yeah beyond that point of the game where you know i need a, f a wind farmer um yeah i definitely like his skills rework so that is more relevant but um i guess that's just for selfish reasons um, <laughs> <laughs> just throw it out there no big deal yeah, um, just men uh, mentioned before, I think Light Werewolf, etc. Um, uh, sorry, Light Werewolf and, uh, is probably doing a bit too much at the moment as well. So, um, especially, you know, on his third skill, being able to reset cooldown every time he manages to kill someone. Um, it, yeah, it's probably a bit too much, and it's on a three turn cooldown as well. So, it's probably something that, you know, if we were going to see. Uh, a balancing patch that might get targeted as well. Yeah, it's kind of funny because when I took a look at it, I was like, I didn't think the, the resetting part. I didn't think was too bad, but the the three turn cooldown. Um, I actually thought it was, you know, obviously that's three turn when it max out. I thought it was more like five, you know, five, you know, max out at four. But from four to three, that's considering the way the violent works, right? Even if you don't, <laughs> even if you don't get, you know, the kill, you can essentially proc right into another one. All right, Fish, so my next question is for you. What is your biggest uh, epic fail that you've had in the game thus far? Wow, it's hard to, uh, hard to put it down to just one. I mean... Well, hit me up. Hit me up. <laughs> Give me top three. Top three, baby. Uh, 
I guess uh, probably the, um, I mean, everyone's done it, right? Um, you know, feeding units that at the time didn't seem that great, um, but then turned out that they were good. Um, when I first started, I think my first four star was an Arnold and I thought, what a stupid name, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to use an Arnold. I'd rather be using these Valks and these uh, Archangels, right, because, you know, that's how I, that's that's how I, I pictured my team when I first started like the, the game, which uh, was obviously a, uh, an illusion. Um, but yeah, I essentially fed Arnold because I didn't like his name. That's uh, and then eventually, you know, he became, you know, the the, the most sought after unit for for quite a while. So uh, yeah, that that was pretty bad. Um, in terms of uh, you know, just. Uh, you know, out just recently, um, uh, as I mentioned, I run two Jubels. Uh, I often just take the wrong one to guild, to guild battles um, oh. and, you know, lose plenty of matches that way. Um, and recently, recently I uh, attacked a guild, a guildy skills and uh, lost to his defense. And I'm, I'm never going to live that down. So, <laughs> but yeah. Good deal. Well, how about uh, shout-outs? We got any shout-outs you want to kind of get out there for the community? Um, yeah, just just mainly to my guild. Um, uh, you know, the guys that, uh, you know, keep this game interesting and fresh for me, really. I mean, to be honest, uh, if there was no community, uh, or if I didn't have my guild, uh, I don't know if I would still be playing, but... Uh, you know, especially after my luck, I guess. Um, but yeah, Wingsies, uh, Croc, Skills, uh, SP, you know, you guys uh, make this game enjoyable for me. And uh, uh, yeah, really appreciate, um, you know, all the advice and and all the, uh, uh, I guess, putting up with, uh, with, uh, with uh, my complaints as well, I guess, main <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, I just want to also mention, you know, again, the, the Summoners War Forum .net, um, you know, drop in, um, you know, if you have any, if you have any questions or if you just want to say hi, you know, there's a lot of good pe people on the forum. Um, you know, we love the chat feature there, you know, something you can, uh, Secretly do while while you're at work or whatnot, um, you know, still be talking about the game even though if you can't play it. Um, but yeah, like a lot of lot of knowledgeable people, especially uh, the guys from Exodus as well. Um, I think that they're really they they're doing very well as well in in uh, in Guild Wars and uh, like Mouth in particular and uh, Mushbeard. You know, those guys have. Uh, yeah, uh, oozing with knowledge in terms of uh, in terms of this game. Yeah, good deal, awesome. And then, uh, how about some calls? I mean, you you've you've gotten quite a bit of uh, people within your community that you talk to and share a lot of knowledge. I, I'm I'm a big big advocate in, in in communicating, you know, as much as you can with some of these people here. And, and you find every once in a while you you meet somebody, you meet a you meet a person that just has this stellar knowledge that you know you feel that can definitely. Um, provide some insight to the community. Is there anybody that you can think of, you know, right off the top of your head, that would be like just a you know great, great uh, person to have on board? Yeah, well, I guess uh, you know you've you've already uh, covered a lot of the the big names in the game. Um, I guess uh, from Malicious uh, Burke, I think he's someone who also utilizes a lot of uh, you know three stars farmable units to get the job done. And uh, yeah, it would be interesting to get his insights as well. Burke, Burke 420, uh, another top 10 player, top three player. You know, if you look, if you look at him consistently, yeah, really quality player. Good. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, a good one. Right absolutely. absolutely. Um, I guess, you know, it's mainly for that seg section of your viewers who, you know, don't have access to all of the premium, um, you know, units in the game. I'm sure he will be able to provide a lot of knowledge as well. Good deal. So, Burke, if you're listening, contact Fish and then Fish will contact me. <laughs> and we'll get you on board, all right? All righty. Well, hey, thank you all again for tuning in. It's your boy Childish and Fish with Childish Plays checking out. Take care, and we'll see you in the next Educate and Dominate episode. We're out.